Some people try to tell us that the biblical Moses and the Exodus account are a myth, even though we know it is not so. We have found the site of the Red Sea crossing, human bones and Pharaoh's chariot wheels strewn around on the ocean floor. We have also found the Mount Sinai, the altar of Aaron, the rock that split into two out of which water gushed out for the children of Israel to drink on the Arabian shore. However, we can't show much for the existence of Moses in Egypt itself. Why is it so? Let's unwrap some cover-ups. When Pharaoh's daughter found this beautiful baby boy floating in a basket in River Nile, it was just a nameless baby and the royal family gave him a name. By the way, Moses is not that name. The word Moses simply implies that he belonged to the Mosaic clan of 18th dynasty pharaohs that ruled Egypt from 1500 to 1400 BC approximately. This is good to know because we can search for Moses within that time frame. Within this period of time, Queen Hatshepsut fits the candidate who took baby Moses out of River Nile. If that is the case, there should be someone in her household who, as the Bible says, was learned in all the wisdom of Egyptians and was mighty in words and in deeds. Yes, there was one such person who was so close to her heart. He held titles such as overseer of the granaries of Ammon and the steward of the property of Ammon, the god of Egypt. Those were the most influential positions of that day. However, he's got an unbelievably strange name, Senenmut, meaning mother's brother. This mother's brother is our biblical Moses. Moses also had been the steward of king's daughter, Nefrura. Probably he told the little princess that he was her mother's brother in order to avoid the whole Nile episode and thus the nickname Senenmut must have stuck with him. Apart from that, Moses also had a first name that the royal family had given him. Some say that it could be Hapi, the name of the Nile River God, since he was taken out of Nile. However, after encountering the true God Yahweh, Moses didn't use his pagan name in his biblical accounts. What makes his traces fade away further was an incident that took place in the 16th year of Hatshepsut's reign. One day, Moses came across an Egyptian mistreating a Hebrew slave and he killed him. In the pretext of delivering justice, Hatshepsut's co-regent, Tatmoses III, who was already jealous of Moses, wanted to kill him. As mentioned in the Bible, Moses escaped and fled into the desert of Midia, relinquishing all his important responsibilities. Hatshepsut was let down by this incident. When someone does such a thing, what the royal family normally does is to erase the person's memory from the history itself by demolishing all their statues and removing their names from all the official records. But Moses was too dear to Hatshepsut. She simply changed all the mention of Moses' name to his nickname, Senenmut, in his ceremonial burial chamber and sealed it off. See all these blocks? How long would it take to change some uh, hieroglyphics on its surface? The pharaohs were famous for that. I don't think for a moment that some guy who held such influential positions in Egypt walked around saying, I am mother's brother. Senenmut is Moses. Before I finish, I want you to take a quick look at baby Moses at Hatshepsut's lap. Egyptologists will tell you this is Senenmut holding a measuring rope in his hand. But somehow the anatomy of this sculpture tells me that it is not of a man but of a woman. A lady with a beard? Yes, Hatshepsut sported a beard when she ruled as a pharaoh. It is a known fact. Here she is holding the basket in her hand which she took out of River Nile. The baby on top is none other than our Moses. I hope you like my interpretation. Thanks for watching.